Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Snyder. Thank you for joining me on this channel, Kingdom Dominion. Welcome. The purpose of this channel is to encourage and equip the body of Christ. Just share who we are according to God's word and what he says that we have. Blessings. Thank you for joining me today in this beautiful day. Um, today we are talking about a living expression. We're going to talk about how Jesus was the living expression of the Father and how we are a living expression of Jesus. So get your pen, get your notebook, and join with me and take some notes if you want. Um, I appreciate all of you who watch regularly. Thank you so much. I appreciate every one of you. If you like this channel, you can subscribe by hitting that subscribe button down there on the left side of the screen. And you can click that bell to get notified every time I post new content. Click the thumbs up. You'll encourage other people to watch and leave a comment. If you have a question or a comment or just anything you'd like to share, hey, this is great content, love what you're doing, or what are you doing? One of those. Okay, so leave a comment. I appreciate your comments. Blessings to you. So here we are digging into this um, topic called a living expression. Now, 1 John 1 verse 1 in the Passion Translation says, We saw him, meaning Jesus, we saw him with our very own eyes. We gazed upon him and heard him speak. Our hands actually touched him, the one who was from the beginning the living expression of God. So John is saying that he saw Jesus with his own eyes and he heard him speak and he gazed upon him, which means he looked steadily, intently, and with great curiosity, interest, pleasure, or wonder. In other words, he was in awe of Jesus. There was something amazing about him that was different than every other person that he had ever met and the early disciples had ever met that caused him to stand out above everyone else and people were drew, drawn to him not just because of the miracles but because he had the words of life did you ever just want to be around someone because they were such a unique individual you enjoyed being around them there was like a charisma about them that you just wanted to hang around them more and more and more well, Jesus was like that. He was a people magnet. People from everywhere, Gentiles alike, Jews and Gentiles alike, were all drawn to him. Now turn with me to Mark 3, 7 through 11. Mark 3, 7 through 11. My pages keep getting turned here in the wind. Okay, Mark 3, 7 through 11. But Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea and beyond the Jordan, and those from Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they heard how many things he was doing, came to him. So he told his disciples, that a small boat should be kept ready for him because of the multitude, lest they should crush him. For he healed so many that as many as had afflictions pressed about him to touch him, and the unclean spirits, wherever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. Now, this crowd of people, imagine that. They came from Galilee. <clears throat> excuse me, Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, beyond the Jordan, Tyre and Sidon. Now, Tyre and Sidon were under Roman rule as most of the world was during Jesus' time, all the known world that, that we know of. And this region, Tyre and Sidon, was along the seacoast and they were a very wealthy, rich people. However, they were dominated by pagans and pagan worship um, from Greek mythology and things like that. But, and also their, their um, 
region was filled with temples to pagan gods and false gods. And even these pagan people in Tyre and Sidon were drawn to Jesus. They heard about him and they came to see him. And amazingly enough, he healed them and delivered them and cast the demons out of them. They probably had some doozies in them, you know, from all that pagan worship and stuff, rituals that they did. No telling how many demons he cast out of them. But isn't that interesting? Here are these pagan people who heard about Jesus and they were drawn to him to get healed and to be set free and to listen to him. Jesus is the living expression of the Father. Now, it's interesting the definition of an expression in the dictionary is it's a frequently used word or phrase, or it's a way to convey your thoughts. Now think about that as the Father would be expressing himself through Jesus. Jesus was God's thoughts. Jesus was a physical being of God's total thoughts toward us. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing to think of him that way. He is the words of what God thought about toward us. Jesus is the expression of the Father's will and his thoughts toward us. And in our terminology, we'd say, let me give you a piece of my mind. Well, Jesus is a piece of the Father's mind. As a matter of fact, he's all of the Father's mind, isn't he? So the Father sent us a personal message in the person of Jesus Christ. He hand-delivered that message about everything he wanted us to know about himself. He hand-delivered his message in the flesh, in the person of Christ. People, thank God, they wrote what they saw and what they heard as we just read about John writing what he had seen and what he had heard so that we too could share in that same expression or that same thought of the Father, what John saw, what the early disciples saw, what they heard, and what they had witnessed for themselves. So 1 John 3, 4 in the, mes in the Message Bible, 1 John 1, 3 through 4, the Message Bible says, we saw it, we heard it, and now we're telling you so you can experience it along with us. This experience of communion with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, our motive for writing is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too. Your joy will be our double joy. Isn't that beautiful how it says that in the Message Bible? Now, what was the message? What was the message that the Father wanted to get across to us and make sure that we heard it, we believed it, and we became it, a living expression? As Jesus was a living expression of the Father, he also wants us to be a living expression of Jesus. What was the message? The Father's message was, be restored to me as your Father, and you'll be free, free from sin's power over you, free from disease to kill you, free from all oppression. And not only have I freed you, but I give you the authority over all the works of my hands. And we can read that in Psalm 8, how God gave man, or the Father gave man dominion over the works of his hands, all of creation. That's why I'm sitting out here. You can see all of creation. The Father gave us dominion or restored that dominion that was lost through Adam and he restored it through Jesus Christ and he said, now you rule over the work of my hands. Now, the question would be, what hinders us from living this way? What hinders us from actually being that complete expression, actually having dominion over what we see around us or what's going on in our own body or what's going on in our families or what's happening in relationships or our finances or all those things. The number one reason is that we look at ourselves. We're looking at ourselves. We're looking at our own 
human limitations instead of fully only looking at Christ and what he accomplished for us. We can't look at spiritual things with natural eyes because if we look at spiritual things with natural eyes, we will not be able to bring forth the results that Christ had already purchased for us to have. Now, a lot of times um, we can think, oh, it's my mind. It's my mind getting in the way. It's the way I think about things. It's my will. It's my emotions. Now, that is true. That is the number one reason why we don't experience or aren't a full expression of Christ is because of our mind. Yet we can so focus on our mind being the problem or our physical body being the problem that we're still not looking at the fullness of what Christ already accomplished. So when I keep looking at myself, I got to stop right there because that's the whole problem. I keep looking at myself. No wonder I keep seeing hindrances, lack, or needing something. It's just another way of trying to look at the spiritual with natural eyes. In this world, something is always lacking, missing, or needing to be filled, replaced, or fixed, right? But in the spiritual with God, everything's already fixed. It was from the beginning. It wasn't just fixed. It was just complete from the beginning. It's ready to jump over from the supernatural into the natural and make our natural just as whole and complete as the spiritual. It's continually available. It's done, it's continually available. So, number one, I stop looking at myself, my limitations. Sorry, it's getting a little windy here. Number two, stop believing that I'm hindered because I don't see a particular thing or I don't know a particular thing yet. Number three, look at Jesus as having fulfilled all and is in all, nothing lacking. He moved in, hell moved out, period. He is constantly supplying and never ever runs out. There's no hindrance in your mind. There's no hindrances anywhere. Now I'm not saying that you don't need to renew your mind. Your mind can be a hindrance, but there does come a point where you have to say, look, I have renewed my mind to the word. My soul is in line with my spirit. I have the mind of Christ. We were given the mind of Christ, which is the mind of the, the spirit within us. So we're re, we have retrained our natural mind to think like the mind of our spirit. And when those two are congruent, are functioning together, then the body submits and we can um, have dominion over our flesh and over other situations that are going on. So Christ is my completer. He's the one who made and makes us whole all the time. What Jesus accomplished was done and finished and complete, but it never stopped. It was done, yet it is still done, and it continues to be done. It wasn't just done and stuck back there somewhere in time. It's for all time, past, present, future, and all eternity. So my mind is no match for the mind of Christ. My mind is no longer a hindrance. It's renewed and continues to be renewed daily. That's where our part is. You're, you're doing the right things. You're renewing your mind daily. You're, you're not looking at those hindrances. So you have the mind of Christ. You already have the mind of Christ. So it's no longer a hindrance. So when I get somewhere in my future, even if it's only a day away, a week away, or years away, Jesus is already there. He's ready, able, willing to meet me there, fully supplied. Amen? So this is so amazing. Um, I had this experience a while back, and I, I like to get up at night and pray when it's quiet by myself and I was just sitting there pointing up to the Lord and I was saying um, thank you father 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are so awesome. I thank you and I praise you. And I was just pointing up to him like that. And then I saw this vision of this big hand in front of me pointing back at me as if to say, I'm awesome inside of you. I sense it was though he was affirming that when I'm aware of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit inside of me, complete in me, that you know how the Father is always magnifying the Son and the Son um, talks about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's pointing to Jesus and then Jesus is pointing back to the Father and they're always magnifying each other. They're always pointing to each other and saying, you know, look at my son or it's the Holy Spirit to help you or look to Jesus or look to the Father. They're always magnifying each other and pointing to each other is to say, look at him. For the reason each one does what he does and that's why they're magnifying each other. Look at what he does. Look at what he does. So as he was pointing at me as if magnifying that I'm not just me. I'm not just as great as he is. I, I am. I'm just as great as he is because he is in me. He was magnifying himself in me by pointing back at me. So he gave me the words, my delight is in her, which is in Isaiah 62, meaning his delight to be inside of us because it's greater to have many of us with him inside of us. So he was magnifying the set of himself that he saw in me, which was magnifying him, which was magnifying the Holy Spirit, which was magnifying the Father. Did you ever see um, years ago when you were a kid and you watched um, Looney Tunes on a Saturday morning, Saturday morning cartoons. And um, there was this one cartoon with these two characters. They were the Goofy Gophers. And their names were Mac and Tosh. And this was a show from the 1960s on the Bugs Bunny show. And their names are a pun on the surname Macintosh. They're characterized by an, abnorm an abnormally high level of politeness. So these two gophers, they were so polite that when they were going to do something, the one would say, after you. And the other one would say, would, no, after you, I insist. And they were extremely polite to each other. And that's the way the Holy Spirit is. And that's the way the Father is and Jesus is. They're always saying, looking at him, oh, after you. They're always magnifying the other person. They're always um, magnifying each other, not themselves, but each other. But in a, they are magnifying themselves as well. And it's like the Holy Spirit is saying, when we're one in Christ, we know that we're one in Christ and we're looking for the Holy Spirit to come and tell us what to do or lead us. And he's saying, as you believe, and we're saying, Sometimes we're like, well, as you believe, well, as you want. And the Holy Spirit is saying, no, I've given you authority to speak. You speak. You tell us what you want us to do. We're your helper. We are here to help you to bring to pass the things that you see in our word. So after you, no, after you. So we're magnifying him. He's magnifying us, just like those cartoon characters. So... In 2 Corinthians, um, let me see if that's where I wanted to go. In 2 Corinthians, in the Passion Translation, it says, servants of, sorry, it was a bug, servants of the new covenant. Are we beginning to sound like those who speak highly of themselves? Do you really need letters of recommendation to validate our ministry like others do? Do we really need your letter of endorsement? Of course not. For your very lives are our letters. This is Paul talking to the Corinthians. Your very lives are our letters of recommendation, permanently engraved on our hearts, recognized and read by everybody. What was Paul saying? You're our letter. We wrote on your heart the gospel of Christ, and now you're the letter that's to be read by everyone who meets you. 
as a, verse three says, as a result of our ministry, you are living letters written by Christ, not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not carved unto stone tablets, but on the tablets of tender hearts. We carry this confidence in our hearts because of our union with Christ before God, yet we don't see ourselves as capable enough to do anything in our own strength, for our true competence flows from God's empowering presence. He alone makes us adequate ministers who are focused on an entirely new covenant. See that? Focused on an entirely new covenant. We're not focused on ourselves. We're not focused on what we can do. We're not being a hindrance to ourselves. We're letting the expression of Christ that has been written on our hearts, written in our spirit, be that letter that is attractive to other people, that draws people to us by the letter, by this, the letter of the spirit that's been written on our hearts, just like Jesus he drew Jew and Gentile alike because he was such an awesome man. And people didn't understand what is it about this man? What is it about him that's unique, that is special? Well, it was because he was the letter sent from the Father. He was that living representation of what the Father thinks of us. And it was like, wow, wow. That's when we read the Bible and we see how God sees us, he sees us as Christ's equal now. And that is so amazing if you think about that for a minute, that the Father, when we are in Christ, he sees us as Christ's equal. That when we speak, it's as though Jesus spoke himself. That's why it's very important that we do have our mind renewed and that we are speaking the things that the Bible says that we are and who we have, that we identify ourselves with his identity, that we are that expression, that we are those words or phrases that are the expression of the Father because of Christ living in us. So remember that Jesus is pointing at you, but you're pointing back at him. And the Holy Spirit is pointing at you, but you're pointing back at him. And the Father's pointing at you, but you're pointing back at him. And they're all pointing back to each other and magnifying each other. You know, Jesus said when he was on the earth, Father, that I may glorify you. I don't come to glorify myself. I don't come to validate myself, but there's one who has validated me. And that is my Father. And we're the same way. Our validation and our credentials are not of ourselves, but we are validated through Christ because he made us the righteousness of God in Christ. So remember that you are a living expression of the Holy Spirit, of Jesus, and of the Father. He's looking at you and you're looking at him and nothing can stand in the way. So thank you for tuning in today. God bless you. I just speak life to your body, health to all of your flesh. I command every system, organ, and gland to function properly in the name of Jesus. I command every hindrance or every hindrance that you think is there in your mind to be removed in Jesus' name. You are complete. You are replete. You are imbued. You are soaked with the Holy Spirit. And you live in the fullness of Christ. All you got to do is express him and let him out. God bless you. Till next time.